a fairly quick uh, um, conversation anyways. Um, so good, uh, good morning, uh, good evening for those of you in Asian time zones. Uh, <laughs> um, Chris uh, Ferris isn't able to make it today, so uh, I'll be running uh, going through the agenda and, and uh, teeing up the conversation. Um, uh, so why don't we dive into the agenda. Um, is Rye on the phone? I am, yes. Okay. Um, so I think this has happened, but just wanted to make sure you and Bawa are working together to get uh, Kello onboarded into the, the, the Hyperledger infrastructure um, and set up with mailing lists and all that, right? Right. The last remaining item is uh, Jenkins, and we're going to work on that next week. Okay. And we've got a, a blog post actually that um, the marketing team is working on um, that uh, we'll, we'll have ready for Bawa's review pretty soon, uh, but based on content that that uh, you know came from from the announcement and other things. So <clears throat> uh, that should get out early next week as well. Um, any any questions or comments for Rai or Bawa about Cello? We're excited to get this started. Um, okay, uh, uh, Todd, do you want to mention the Hackfest or talk about the Hackfest? Sure thing. Uh, so the Hackfest, uh, February 1st and 2nd in San Francisco. If you have not registered and you're planning on attending, please take care of that ASAP. Uh, here is the registration link. And then the second part of that, we do have a draft agenda, which is uh, very skeletal at this moment, uh, as they typically have been. Um, dropping that in the Google Doc as well. If there's things you'd like to see get discussed, if there are topics that you'd like to uh, lead a discussion on, please drop them into the proposed agenda items. We'll get those all slotted out uh, at the beginning of, of the first day of the Hackfest. And then from there, uh, looking at the two-month cadence, we are still looking at tentatively holding a Hackfest in Shanghai in March, uh, right around the time of the Hackathon, which is around the 11th and 12th. Um, and so if you have space, please shoot me a message so we can coordinate on that. And then looking further down the road uh, to continue to plan these further out, New York in the May time frame. Uh, so again, if you have space uh, in or very near around New York, please get in touch with me. The sooner we can get these on the books and everyone can uh, plan for travel, the better. Any questions there before we move on? All right. I, and I want to add, there's a, a nonprofit that I work with uh, called Benetech that has been uh, you know, working with open source software in the field of accessibility, human rights work, that sort of thing. Um, who and uh, has been talking with another nonprofit called Humanity United about blockchain technology related projects. They asked if they could have a meeting off to the side <coughs> uh, of the. Uh, uh, at, at, at the Letterman Center, where we'll be hosting as well. So we're helping them facilitate just a small conversation. But um, if there was any interest in the part of uh, folks planning to attend the Hackfest in talking with uh, a couple of nonprofits about how they might use blockchain technology for social impact, let me know. They're looking at kind of a two or three hour conversation on uh, February 2nd. Uh, and uh, I think it'd be really fun to make sure that they were well informed about about the, the underlying technology to, to do that. It just the, These two things kind of came up at the same time and it seemed rather fortuitous, so decided to see if we could facilitate that. So, so let me know if you're, if you're interested in that. Um, uh, so moving on, um, so there was a, a conversation uh, last week about the CII security badge. Uh, I know Chris is looking at this and, and looks like we're, we're pretty good on most of the fronts but I think there are a few things he's following up on. I left this here as an agenda item because I wasn't sure if he had wrapped up conversations and that might just be something that we should return to next week. Um, because I hadn't seen any any updates over, over email either about this in the last week. Uh, we're still recruiting for the security maiden position though um, and I'll, I'll mention that in the, the um, final agenda item. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't know if anyone else had any updates um, on, on security badging or the um, 
getting getting that certification. Yeah, we took the, we took a look from the sawtooth perspective, and it looks like most items are covered. I think one of the things that had come up for Chris as well was the the use of a static analysis tool, and whether or not um, the Linux Foundation would have licenses or, or the Hyperledger project, I guess, specifically would be able to fund licenses for tools that would have to run on public servers. Okay. Um, I, Rye, I don't know if uh, this was something that uh, you were looking into. Uh, no, <clears throat> I wasn't looking into funding the CII tools uh, or the uh, the tools to do the static analysis. Um, on other projects, um, we we have done that. Um, so that I think would just be up to the, you know the TSC or the the project as to whether or not they wanted to allocate funds for that. Okay. Well, how about um, uh, Ryan, myself, and Chris? I uh, uh, do a bit more discussion about this offline and come back um, at a future TSC with, with a plan for this because I, I, other projects do it. If it's something we have access to and can just turn on, that, that almost seems like a no-brainer. Um, so, uh, uh, right, we'll come back next week or, or at a, at a, hopefully a, 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 another TSC meeting soon. And Mike Dolan in chat just said we needed to see the licenses. So I don't know if you caught that, Brian. I saw that. I wasn't. I was parsing that while I was talking. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I'll include him in the conversation too. Uh, and if anyone has any experience with the new um, Google code fuzzing uh, uh, stuff or is interested in pursuing that, I'd love to wrap that in as well. Um, it sounds kind of interesting. So uh, uh, on to the next item. Um, right, did did take a look at the um, the cost of having our IT organization host Rocket Chat, which is an open source um, uh, substitute for Slack. Uh, Rai, I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about that, or I can try to fill in. Uh, sure. I talked to uh, our uh, IT guy Eric Cersei, and he said that the the price would be he would estimate that it would be about three hundred and fifty dollars a month, uh, which would include hosting and operations, and uh, the actual hosting costs would be passed through to the uh, project budget directly. So I, I don't know you know what the exact month month costs are, but in on the order of magnitude of you know three hundred and fifty dollars. Is there a sense for um, whether people have looked at Rocket Chat and feel like it's the it's it's a suitable replacement? You know, does it have the features people need? I know there was one other um, uh, uh, another open source alternative called Mattermost, I think, um, that uh, uh, people suggested to me. I don't know if we want to look at that. I mean, the cost doesn't doesn't strike me as a problem at all. We can afford that. Um, I I just want to make sure that. You know, if we introduce it, we're able to, to migrate people there and off of Slack. Um, well, uh, one advantage is that uh, Rocket Chat does support uh, CAS, which is the, the ID system that LFID uses. So we would, uh, when people signed into Rocket Chat, they would be using an LFID, um, which uh, might help ameliorate uh, spammers, et cetera. Uh, getting on chat, and uh, I, I'm unsure if Mattermost uh, supports CAS. Okay. What, so what I assume that, that means. Go so I assume that that means that we would have the chats archived, which would be obviously a big gain from what we have to do with Slack. Uh, I believe the answer is yes, and I suspect that. Once we begin the migration, uh, I will just go through and disable everyone's accounts on Slack. And once we get below some number, uh, we could pay the whatever it is, $20 a user for five users, uh, to turn off the 10,000 message limit. And then I could get in and archive the channels and make our chat history available somewhere on the wiki or something like that. So I think we may be able to extract our Slack history uh, 
and then keep our chat history on Rocket Chat moving forward. That's a neat idea. Does, would that let you retroactively uh, reach back, or would it just be whatever that uh, more recent volume was? That is the question. I don't know. I, I'm hoping that they have kept everything from day zero, but I haven't tried such shenanigans, so I don't know. Hi, yeah, uh, this is Leonard. Um, yeah, but certainly, if if all the data is archived, all the documents are archived, um, we could have an archival agreement to hold everything for a certain period of time if they can't hold it forever. In fact, it can be dumped to some hard drive or some localized server. So we should keep everything, and it's so we can certainly manage the cost for doing that just by having an archive period where it stays live and available and then after that it gets then moved or dumped to a, you know some server somewhere no I, a, a requ requirement zero should be um, that going forward conversations get archived and they're searchable um, I think the question is whether previous conversations that were on slack would also be able to be included in that archive um, and we can we can look into that um, why don't we come back with some answers to that uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, maybe a TF for approval at net next week's uh, TFC uh, on migration. Um, are there any other last questions people would want answered before, um, you know, so that we can we can make a decision at, at next week's meeting? Uh, are there is there like a test environment we can play with Rocket Chat? Yeah, there's a link uh, uh, that Todd provided, um, rocket.chat. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Do, I, I, I was just meaning, do we have, I, I've, I've got the link open, I've been just looking at it, Look, it actually looks really good. Um, I was just wondering if there's a functioning system up that we can just poke around with. Ry, has, the, uh, has LFIT done an integration for, uh, or sub rocket chat for any other project? Uh, no, we would be the first, and okay. we don't we don't have a test system uh, up. Okay, uh, I, I will say, given the feature list that's on there, it looks really good. So thank you for your uh, effort in finding it. Do we know whether that means it's also more usable to everybody around the world, including people behind restricted, restricting firewalls and the likes? The firewall issue should drop away if um, it's something that's served from an IP address range um, associated with the Linux Foundation, uh, where rather than from um, you know, Slack. Uh, so, so, but one one good piece of news. I mean, Slack, um, if it was blocked by the Great Firewall, currently does not appear to be. But there is always that risk that if we're in the same IP address range as other, you know, sensitive conversations or, or um, un, you know, for other reasons, the uh, um, other communities get get that range blocked, then we would be affected. Um, and hopefully, that wouldn't be uh, the same issue with the LFIT IP address range. There's a parallel question about is it usable in high latency, high packet loss networks, um, and I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, Rai, you know, we could see about setting up a test instance from LFIT um, with the uh, I, uh, can, with the uh, integration with the uh, ID system um, and let people log in and touch it before we. Uh, so, based on, uh, I, I think that's going to take over two weeks. So when I was talking to Eric about this, it's it's going to take him about two weeks to set up uh, the instance and and do the CAS integration um, for for us if we want to go into production. And I can't imagine that the timeline is shorter uh, if we want to do the integration. So if we want to. You know, add two weeks onto getting the production instance up. Um, I, I can ask. Why don't we go forward and and, and ask uh, LFIT to get a, an instance set up, and and we'll we'll 
test it out and and play with it and and if it works we'll start migrating to it if it, if there's still issues we can continue to work through those or or talk about alternatives but i think i think support here has been pretty unanimous um for at least taking the next step so um uh right so you, you want me to tell eric to go forward at the approximately 350 dollar a month level and yeah. uh if it doesn't work out we'll just pull a plug question mark right okay i will do that and then as a community, you know, we can, you know, still have a choice if we if we go down a week or two of running it on LFIT infrastructure and testing it out. If it just doesn't work, then we'll pull the plug. But if it works, then we come up with a migration plan for moving the community off of Slack, hopefully with the archives. In my experience, um, as soon as there is a better alternative, you don't have to do any sort of uh, prompting for the migration. Users just storm. So... Uh, I right. think it will be a very short transition. There's links. There's you know, um, you know, we still see people leaving, opening new issues uh, on on GitHub, for example, when they should be moving over to Jira. So so it's you know, it's doing all that. Great. Okay. Um, the last. Uh, um, oh, there's a, a couple more agenda items. Um, so uh, Hyperledger is hiring. Um, we have opened uh, four open positions. Um, uh, there are th uh, three different positions. Um, one of them is fairly non-technical, though still would require um, some technical expertise. That's the member uh, ecosystem manager. This is somebody to kind of just think about the relationships we have with our members, but also the broader business community and bringing them on board. Um, uh, but the two more technical positions are the community architect and security maven. And uh, the, uh, we can provide the link to it. We actually put it, made a blog post about it. We've been starting to drop it on social media. Um, but I would really love the TSE's help in recruiting for this position um, because these are people you'll be working with pretty closely. Um, I feel pretty strongly they should be people from your networks. Uh, they don't have to be people who already are touching or working on Hyperledger. Um, uh, but uh, I think I think uh, it, you know the kind of personal connections that that you know somebody that you know and you trust um, and referencing them in that's going to mean a lot to me. Uh, so um, if you could spread this through your networks, uh, retweet our tweets. <laughs> Uh, do those sorts of things, that would be extremely helpful. Um, all four of these positions are full-time on Hyperledger as well, which will be a really huge gift for us um, and, and help help all of us uh, on this side of the, of the fence um, scale. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, oh, the other thing I'll add, um, those positions, you know, we have a preference for people who are based in San Francisco, New York, or London, but... Um, that's not a, a strong preference. Uh, my my stronger preference is to hire high quality <laughs> individuals, you know, who are able to to do what we need, and we can work with them no matter where they're based. Uh, so so um, please, if you know people who you think would be appropriate, encourage them to apply. Great. Um, so uh, just a few more items. Um, so we had talked about asking the working groups to deliver by, I think it was by this meeting, um, uh, working group charters. Um, basically so we can understand, do we have the right uh, mission for each of these working groups? Um, is there perhaps a need to, to uh, uh, readdress, uh, revisit uh, some of them? Uh, uh, the identity work group provided a draft. Thank you, Vipin. Um, and I know, um, you know, the white paper working group has been working really hard on, uh, Hart has been leading that uh, to, to create, to, to work on its white paper, which has been, um, you know, really beneficial. I, I, I don't want to drop this. I think this is important work to do. Um, I, but I know how loaded people are. Um, should we Should we come back to this in a week, in two weeks, and try to get at least drafts from each of the working groups? Um, and what more might we want to do to uh, encourage that? Oh, Hart did send a charter out. I'm sorry. No, I did miss that. Thank you. Thank you, Hart. In the technical working group, China, um, I think it was Baoha or Victor, I can't remember, uh, sent one out um, last night as well. So conceivably, we can compile these in and hunt, hunt for the okay. last three or four or so. Right. 
Hi, Brian. Uh, Ram Jagadeesan here. Uh, uh, we have a draft going in architecture work group as well. We discussed it in the last meeting. Uh, I haven't reformatted it uh, to Vipin's uh, template. Uh, I will do that and then uh, share that as well. Okay, great. And is Oleg on the call? Okay, I'll I'll reach out to him separately then and see um, see where he might be on that. Uh, great. Well, how about over email? We start uh, the conversation about about these drafts um, and uh, uh, and then um, do a check in at next week's call uh, and and then maybe aim to have kind of a formal adoption of them in about two weeks ish. Does that seem about right? Sounds good to me. Okay, um, and uh, uh, yeah, and I don't, I don't think we had a protocol working group, uh, or if we did, it wasn't it predated my time. So I'm wondering, I mean, or is that alive? And I just, I didn't know about it. Uh, <laughs> um, if if, uh, if it's not alive, you could just drop it from this list. Okay. It seems. Oh, Ben is Ben is in charge. Um, I will, uh, according to the Ben, I will. Right, Just quickly, we'll yeah, the protocols for all all types of protocols, or what does it specifically relate to? Yeah, that protocol working group. I see you signed Ben's name to it. I just wanted to know. There's so many types of protocols. It's any any protocols and standards that you use within Hyperledger. I don't know. Okay, so this is fact finding. Okay, okay we'll tell you what. Uh, uh, I'll follow up with Ben offline. See if that group is still alive. If not, um, uh, any interest in it will just. Uh, it seems uh, something the architecture working group uh, might be interested in, um, or might be uh, aligned with what it's working on, um, or the white. Yeah, group. so. Um, you, you, you so far, I think um, um, Brian, uh, the protocol work has been. Um, uh, under the fabric uh, project, so we haven't quite bubbled it up to a general, um, you know, overall architecture uh, work group item. Though I think it probably deserves to be done there. We want to address the basic architecture first before we go to the protocol in the architecture work group. But I think it makes sense uh, when we are ready to address it at uh, uh, a hyperledger project level as opposed to a fabric level. Uh, it makes sense to move it to the architecture work group. Okay, great. And then is the Fabric SDK working group really just synonymous with the maintainership of the Fabric SDK, SDK project? Could we just roll that over to being uh, about the same thing that the other maintainerships are on these other projects? Or is there a specific reason to have this be a cross-cutting working group? Okay. Okay. We will. Um, I'll look again at the history of that in the in the um, decisions here and see. Should we just either adopt a formal thing or just note? But we'll. I, I presume was that Bawa leading the Fabric SDK work, SDK working group, or was it someone else? Uh, well, Brian. Uh, actually, I'm interested with the the, the to lead the work. However, I, I already lead the. the the charter design of the DW China. So maybe we can nominate like uh, in or Jim to lead the work, how do you think? I think I think what I'm exploring here is whether it's actually a working group or even but really just uh, the, the maintainers around the Fabric SDK project and something that we can we can declassify as a cross cutting working group and instead just say no that's the, the project specific maintainership like every project has. So I think I think you're off the hook. Uh, okay. Way. <laughs> okay. Okay. A little bit of garbage collection doesn't doesn't hurt. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, and then um, two final points. Uh, one is. Uh, um, 
you know, Chris had mentioned this in email, but uh, you know, we'd really like to see each of the individual projects doing a monthly update. Uh, uh, the timing that would work best in coordination with the newsletter that we'd like to push out at the end of each month and other processes is to ask for roughly the third TSC meeting. Um, and we'll send a reminder out to, to prompt people for this, but uh, um, and it doesn't have to be long. A, a paragraph or you know three four bullet points would be fine. But this is really useful as a tool to be able to disseminate knowledge about your projects uh, uh, to the broader world um, and to attract new developers and to remind people there's momentum and and just you know get some of that cross project uh, kind of discussion going as well. So um, I just want to plead again uh, for that, and hopefully at the next uh, TSC call, um, uh, we could be reviewing that set of monthly updates from each of the projects. Any any comments on that or, or, or further thoughts? Hi, this is Vipin. Um, just mentioned that uh, any actual implementations should be uh, mentioned, and if if you know if they are available uh, to be, um, if the details of any such implementations are known, it would be great to get a look at them. Absolutely. In fact, um, separately, one thing I'm talking with the uh, um, our marketing team here, and and has been brought up in the marketing committee calls, is uh, the prospect of a um, of a pilot and production tracker uh, on the site, basically a place where when people ask, okay, who's actually using Hyperledger related code somewhere out there in the big wide world, we can say, why here? Here's a big list. Uh, and it doesn't have to be, you know, sensitive details, and it can't be, obviously. But it, it hopefully is such, you know, Company X launches a pilot based on Hyperledger with companies Y and Z for, you know, trade finance or something like that. Um, and so uh, that kind of list is going to be <laughs> a challenge for us to come up with out of thin air. Um, what we really will need is the technology community um, helping us track this and understand, um, you know, where where these are being used, uh, so that we can make that list as comprehensive as possible. So when we're ready to to launch, um, I'll follow up here on the TSC call, but uh, um, and and uh, uh, and work that out. Well, I think that would be one of the responsibilities for our new community director, whoever gets hired. It's all to do with communication and providing that level of um, understanding and accountability. So, yeah, it's, uh, I'm happy to wear things with the best in here. Excellent. Excellent. Any other thoughts about the monthly update? Okay, and then finally, just a, a reminder, if any of you are interested in serving as a mentor for our internship program, um, please let us know. Um, we're still putting together the program, uh, uh, but uh, it should, it should, uh, more details about this will be coming up pretty soon. And Todd, this is Leonard, uh, if you're on. I did last year say I would like to, <laughs> so please uh, keep me on in, involved. Thanks. We'll do. We'll do. We're, we're tracking on everyone that's reached out to us, and we will share that with the uh, the TSC once we have the details finalized or near final, <clears throat> uh, as well as on Slack and whatnot. So everyone will be in the loop. Okay, great. Um, any other last minute topics anyone wants to to put on the table? Well, I'll be really excited to see all of you, in, or as many of you as possible in San Francisco uh, at the end of this month, beginning of February. Uh, uh, just a reminder, there's also Construct happening at a Stanford blockchain conference happening uh, the Thursday, Friday before. Um, so it'll be a pretty active week out here. Um, uh, if you need justification for travel budget, um, it's certainly there. <laughs> Let me know if I can help with that. Um, uh, uh, but uh, otherwise, um, thanks everyone. and. Um, hope to see you around soon. Well, thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day. Happy New Year to everyone again. All right, thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.